In this video we consider the arithmetic and the algebra of complex numbers. The FP1 specification has quite a large paragraph about complex numbers and in this video we are going to just consider the parts highlight, highlighted here on the specification. We need to be confident about the processes of adding, subtracting and multiplying two complex numbers. We need to be aware that if we have the complex number z which equals x plus iy then its complex conjugate is z bar which is x minus iy and that the complex conjugate is crucial when we are trying to divide one complex number by another complex number. We need to be aware of the language of what we mean by the real part of a complex number and the imaginary part of the complex number. And we also need to be aware that if we have two complex numbers that are equal to each other, then their real parts must be equal to each other and their imaginary parts must also be equal to each other. A complex number, x plus iy, can be represented by the point xy on the Argand diagram. And that then leads us to the notion of the modulus and the argument of a complex number. So if we have our Argand diagram with the point P, coordinates xy, representing the complex number z equals x plus iy, then the modulus of z is the length is the length of the line joining the origin to the point P and Pythagoras' theorem rapidly gives us that mod z must be the square root of x squared plus y squared and notice there's no appearance of the i's in that expression at all so the modulus of x plus i y is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And the argument of z is the angle made at the origin by the line going along the positive real axis and the line going from the origin up to the point P. Conventionally, arg z is given in radians and it also traditionally is given as an angle between minus pi and pi. Finally, if we know that mod z is equal to r and arg z is equal to theta, then we should also be aware of the fact that z could be written as r times cos theta plus i sine theta, or if you like, z equals r cos theta plus i times r sine theta. That's what we get if we expand the brackets out. So now let's have a look at a couple of complex number examples. The first one comes from the 2012 June paper. So we're looking at the equation z times 2 plus i equals 1 plus 2i squared. And we're looking to solve that equation. Or well, probably the first thing to do here is to concentrate on the right hand side of the equation. We've got 1 plus 2i squared. Well, 1 plus 2i squared is the same thing as 1 plus 2i times 1 plus 2i. We can multiply that out in the usual way to obtain 1 plus 4i plus 4i squared. Now we need to remember of course that i squared is minus 1. So we've got 1 plus 4i plus negative 4. In other words, we've got minus 3 plus 4i. So the original equation now can be rewritten as z times 2 plus i equals minus 3 plus 4i. And we can solve that equation by dividing each side of the equation by 2 plus i. So we've got z must be minus 3 plus 4i divided by 2 plus i. 
We know that to divide a complex number by another complex number, we must multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we've got to work out three, minus 3 plus 4i times by 2 minus i divided by 2 plus i times 2 minus i. Looking at the denominator first of all, 2 plus i times 2 minus i is 2 times 2 is 4. Take away 2i plus 2i, cancel each other out, and then I've got i times minus i, which is minus i squared, which is plus 1. So the bottom is going to come out as being 5, and the top we can expand in our usual algebraic fashion to get minus 3 times 2 is minus 6, minus 3 times minus i is plus 3i, 4i times 2 is 8i, and 4i times minus i is minus 4i squared. And that's all over the 5 that we've already found. 4i squared is negative 4, so we've got minus 6 minus minus 4, which becomes minus 2, plus 11i, on the top and the 5 on the bottom. So we've got z is minus 2 fifths plus 11 fifths of i. So that's the first part of the question done. The second part of the question asks us to determine the modulus and argument of this complex number. And whenever you've got the modulus and argument of a complex number to work out, it's well worth just drawing a quick sketch and marking onto the Argand diagram the position of the point representing the complex number z. The modulus of z is the length of the line joining the origin to the point representing z. So by Pythagoras we've got mod z is the square root of minus 2 fifths squared plus 11 fifths squared and that comes rapidly through to give us mod z equals root 5. Now the argument of our complex number is the angle at the origin made by the line going off along the positive real axis and the line going off to the point z. So the argument of our complex number is that angle that we've marked there. Now, it's not dreadfully easy to find that angle directly. It's much, much easier if we start working with right-angled triangles. So we're going to create a right-angled triangle, which has got the red line there as the hypotenuse, and has got two-fifths, that's the length of the base, and eleven-fifths as the vertical height there. Notice we're just dealing with lengths in this right angle triangle. We don't need to worry about signs in it at all. We're just dealing with lengths. So we can say that tan theta is the opposite divided by the adjacent is 11 over 5 divided by 2 fifths. So that tells me that theta must be 1.39. Remember, arguments are measured in radians. So we need to be using radians on our calculators at this point. Now we haven't quite done yet because we've got to remember that theta isn't the argument of z. However, we do know that theta together with the argument of z makes a straight line. So we can say that arg z is pi minus theta, which is 1.75 radians. Now let's just pause for a moment and have a look at the mark structure for this question. For part a, there are two marks for correctly working out 1 plus 2i squared. There was then a method mark for dividing by 2 plus i, followed up by three answer marks for actually executing the division correctly. Moving on to part b, there was one mark for correctly working out the modulus of z, and the answer could be given either in third form or to a sensible level of accuracy. 
three significant figures or better. And then there were two marks for working out the argument of said correctly. Right, let's move on to a second example then, which comes from June 2011. We have complex number Z and its complex con and its complex conjugate Z bar satisfy the equation 2Z bar plus I times Z equals 1 plus 2I times 2 minus 3I. We have to find what the complex number Z is. Well, the first thing we've got to remember, of course, is that the complex conjugate of x plus i y is x minus i y. And the second most natural thing to do on this question is to work out the right-hand side of the equation again. So we've got to work out what 1 plus 2i times 2 minus 3i is. We multiply these brackets out in the normal way. So we've got 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times minus 3i is minus 3i, 2i times 2 is 4i, and 2i times minus 3i is minus 6i squared. And if we go through that and simplify it in the obvious ways, the minus 3i and the 4i becomes just plus 1i, and the minus 6i squared is minus 6 times minus 1 is plus 6. So the whole thing simplifies through to 8 plus i. So we can now rewrite the original equation in a much simpler form. We can say that we've got two lots of x minus i y plus i times x plus i y equals 8 plus i. Multiplying out the brackets, that's 2x minus 2i y plus i x plus i squared y must equal 8 plus i. We know that i squared is minus 1. So we've now got 2x minus 2yi plus xi minus y equals 8 plus i. Collect together the real terms on the left hand side. That's the 2x and the minus y. Collect together the imaginary terms on the right hand side. That's xi take away 2yi. And we end up with 2x minus y plus x minus 2y lots of i must equal 8 plus i. The real part of the left hand side is 2x minus y. The real part of the right hand side is 8. So we must have 2x minus y equals 8. The imaginary part of the left-hand side is x minus 2y. The right-hand side has an imaginary part of just i. That's 1i. So we must have x minus 2y equal to 1. We now have a pair of simultaneous equations, and we can solve those in any appropriate way to obtain x equals 5 and y equals 2. And this means that z must equal 5 plus 2i. Finally, we just Finally, we must consider the mark scheme for this question. The first two marks were for correctly calculating 1 plus 2i times by 2 minus 3i. We then had a method mark for making use of the fact that z bar was x minus i y and writing down this equation here that 2x, 2 lots of x minus i y plus i lots of x plus i y equaled 8 plus i. There were then two method marks for obtaining the simultaneous equations and finally two answer marks for obtaining the correct expression for z, namely 5 plus 2i.